Grace and peace to you all, my beloved. This is the day the Lord has made. I thank God for the weather today. It's a fresh weather. In fact, the air that is blowing is like a breeze right by the sea, by the ocean. And yet I'm not anywhere near the ocean. This breeze is so soothing, so comforting. I can say that it's coming from the very presence of God. The leaves are, of the trees are just coming up. Green, beautiful. The Lord is always good. Today being the first of April. The first of April, 2020. God has been so good to you and I. Let us offer unto him pure praise. He is worthy of it all. My beloved, the temperature here is 52 degrees Fahrenheit, making it 11.1 degrees Celsius. And God showing himself so magnanimous, magnanimous, so beautiful, so great, so gracious in everything. I've described to you the kind of air that I am enjoying here. And you can see, my beloved, I want you to take a look at the clouds. So beautiful. It's like, a, you know, look, look at the clouds. Look at the skies. Look at the clouds. The handiwork of God. So beautiful. As if there's a gathering of a cumulus nimbus rain. It's as if water is gathering and very soon the clouds will empty themselves upon the earth. But this is also the comforting. It's, it's almost like a comforter, you know, comforter. Like, you know how we use uh, cut, cotton? You put the cotton in, uh, in, in your pillow. It gives, I mean, it just gives, gives you a very comforting sleep. The same you use in your comforter and all that but look at it that's that's the handiwork of our god and all this hold water when the lord decides he lets them empty themselves upon the earth showers of blessing that's how our god is we thank him for his goodness i hope you've enjoyed the sight of it and wherever you are you may be seeing the same listen god is good always take time take time appreciate god look at the skies just see the handiwork of god Look at the trees. Look at nature. They all speak a volume. They speak a volume to the goodness of God. They speak a volume to the artistic work of God. That God is the greatest artist that the world will and ever know. Have and will ever know. God. So suddenly he will change the clouds and turn into empty the whole skies, almost like there has never been clouds. And then you see the clear blue sky. Then you see all the colors coming up. That is God. And he is to be feared and he is to be reverent. He's the only reverent. He's the only true reverend. All the others of us who carry that name, Reverend, 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 there is nothing so reverent about us. God is the only one to be reverent. Okay? God is the only one to be reverent. Ours is a title. His is not. He, 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 he is what he is. He is to be reverent. He is the reverent. He is the God who is to be reverent. Hallelujah. So let us offer unto him pure praise and glory. Beloved, listen. The word of God in the book of Isaiah 33 today that God has placed in my heart to share with all of us. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest. Are you hearing? Woe to thee that spoilest, you who spoil. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with you. When you shall cease to spoil, you shall be spoiled. And when you make an end of dealing treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with you also. Amen. That's what the word of God is saying. So woe unto thee. See, the Lord, this is a message he was speaking to, to the children of Israel. Then, to say, he said, you who deal treacherously. And we live in a world today where we see treachery all around. Treachery. Whether it be individuals against individuals, group of people against other group of people, a race of people against other race of people, 
uh, tribes against other tribes, nations against other nations. We do so treacherously and we seek to spoil others and destroy them. At the time when we've claimed we feel like we, are, we have power, we use it and we destroy others, we spoil them, we deal treacherously with many, individually and collectively. That's what God was, is what spoke to the children of Israel then. And now he speaks that also to all nations who have that spirit of treachery and spoilage, where we spoil others and we deal treacherously with others and we feel like we can do it and nobody can do it to us. Well, God is saying that that's not the case. And that when you spoil, at the time when you feel like you have the power to do and, and you are on top, he said, know that there is a day coming that others, when you stop, others will start this and they will destroy, they will spoil you too. And then you who deal treacherously, he said, when you do it, know that the time will come when you stop being treacherous, others will also start this and being treacherous to you. That's why in the book of Matthew, the Lord tells us, do unto others as you have others to do to you. Because if you are one who deal, who love to spoil, your time will come when you also be spoiled. If you are one who won't like to be treacherous, your time will come when you also somebody others will also be treacherous to you. Beloved, this is a message that we need to take to heart today, even today. That is needed today. You know, somebody goes to hide in a laboratory somewhere, manufactures poison and then think that he will try to destroy some other person. But when you do that, you forget that there is something called boomerang. Or oh, there is also something that the Lord is saying now. At the time when you finish doing yours, others will also come up against you. So you see, in this world, we cannot afford to be spoilers and also treacherous. We can't, because when you do it, it will be done against you. As an individual, as a group of people, as a race of people, as a tribe of people, as a nation, we cannot afford to do that. Now, this message is for the whole world. I'm speaking by the Spirit of God to the whole world. The Lord is saying, woe unto us. Woe unto the one who desire, who delights in spoiling other people. Because when you have stopped spoiling, others will also spoil you. Woe unto those who love treachery and deal treacherously with other people, against other people. Because the time when you come to the end of your treachery, others will also be treacherous to you. That is, that is, that is uh, a cardinal law, I believe. It's, it's, it's what Jesus Christ amplified or explained so beautifully where he says, do unto others what you want them to do unto you. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, do unto others what you want them to do unto you. If you are treacherous to them, they'll be treacherous to you. If you are kind to them, they will be kind to you. If you will spoil them, they will spoil you. That's what the word of God is saying, my beloved, to us today. And then when you leap and go to verse 13, it says, Here ye that are far off what I have done, and you that are near acknowledge my might. Those of us who are far off, those who don't know God, it says, look at what I have done, what I am capable of doing. And those of us who are near to him, we have to acknowledge his might. We have to let the whole world know that he is the almighty God. Now, verse 14, it says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Now, the sinners in Zion are afraid. We were talking to Israel then at that time. The sinners in Israel are afraid. And in our world today, the sinners in the world are afraid. Those who are living in sin are afraid. Why? Because they don't know their end. If you are a believer and you are afraid, my friend, I'm afraid. Of, I'm, I, I just, I don't know why you should be afraid. 
Because the Bible, Paul wrote, it says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So why should I be afraid? If even it means death, it is gain. That's what Paul is saying. So we, that is why Christians are not afraid. That's why those who have trusted in God are not afraid. Because for us, death means gain. And living is Christ, to live is Christ. See, the sinners of Zion are afraid. And fearfulness, did you hear that? Listen to it. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Fearfulness has crippled, has taken the hypocrites by surprise and crippled them. Who amongst us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? I want you to listen carefully. Beloved, listen carefully. It is important that you and I listen carefully to this word because it is very important, it is necessary, especially in these last days where we have all this kind of false teaching and false doctrines that is circulating. I'll, I'll be coming to that. He's asking a question, he said, who, who shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who amongst us shall dwell with everlasting burning? God bringing judgment upon that land because of their evil ways. I brought a message from the book of Hosea, chapter 4, where God says he had a controversy with the children of Israel. Controversy with Ephraim. Controversy. Because there is no truth. There was no truth in the land. There was no mercy. There was no knowledge of God. And our world <laughs> is no better than them. Our world is even worse than they were then. And so you can expect that God has a controversy with our world today. Has a controversy, a great one with us. Because there is no truth, there is no mercy, and there is no knowledge of God. Even from the houses of God, those who stand behind pulpits and claim that they know God, they don't. Why? Because there is no truth in them. There is no mercy. They are so merciless with the flock of God. All they do is keep on extracting money from them, extracting from them, extorting them, and draining them until they have nothing left. All in the name of prosperity. So seed, and that God will listen. Well, my contention is that if, if that's the case, why don't you look for the poorest of the poor in the congregation? And so, the same amount of seed that you say, should you sow in there for all of them, and then wait for God to give you what you promise them God will give to them it is as practical as that hallelujah he says the people who will abide is this he, says, he that walks righteously and speaks uprightly did you hear that he that walks righteously and speaks uprightly I just want to take the stop and let you have that to sink in that in the midst of the devouring fire in the midst of the flaming fire those who walk righteously and speak uprightly will abide there will be fire but they will not be burned there will be fire but they will not be burned what is the proof well the three Hebrew Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Were they thrown into fire? Was it a devouring fire? Were they burned? No. Who, was my, who is my witness? Nebuchadnezzar. He will tell you. Hallelujah. It's a he that despises, he that despises the gain of oppression. Our world is full of oppression. People are oppressing other people just for gain. People are being oppressed for gain. Watch our world today, my beloved. I, you don't have to look for. Watch our world today. Every nation, all the nations are full of oppressors who oppress the people for the sake of gain. Be it in the businesses, whatever. Oppression. One nation oppressing another nation. All for gain. 
said, the man who does not do that shall abide. Shall abide. Shall abide. My beloved, read with understanding. Shall abide. He that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes. Those who don't take bribes. Again, our nations are full of bribe takers. There are different names that they call it everywhere. No matter how polished a name they give to it, it is still bribery. People in three-piece suits who have enough to bribe, to make, to get what they want, they do it. The poor who don't have, the little that they get, they are taken and put into prison. My beloved, he who does not take bribe, he who does not take bribe, God is saying, wow. He who does not take bribes, he that stops his ears from hearing of blood, he who stops his ears, he does not even want to hear blood shed, hear that somebody's blood is being shed, let alone he participating in it. Did you hear what I'm saying? So those of us who cheer and clap, you know, when lies are told so we can go to war, and then we go and shed blood and we cheer and cheer and cheer. Our ears love that. And we still call ourselves Christians. When we glory in seeing other people's blood spilled. <laughs> that fire will devour you. But it says those who do not want to even hear bloodshed or, even, or participate in it, they will be spared. The fire will be burning, but they will not. Be touched. He who shuts his eyes from seeing evil. Beloved, I want you to read this. Read it. It is, it is what we need in this time. We need to hear this in this time. He shall dwell on high. A person like that shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be munitions of rocks. Wow. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. God himself is going to guarantee that person's safety. Have you read Psalm 91? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say unto me that the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Then I shall see the land in his beauty. Then I shall see the king in the beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. They will have a foretaste of heaven. The land that is afar off. My beloved, this is the word of God today. God is showing us how even in the midst of tribulation, he protects his own. How in the midst of protection, you know, in the midst of tribulation, he protects his own. Let me ask, let me look at the question again. He says, he says this, the sinners, verse 14, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Christians who are living in sin are afraid. Christians that are hypocrites are afraid. They are afraid. So they will tell you that, well, uh, you are not going to go through the tribulation because they are afraid. They are afraid. I sit with pastors and they will say, my friend, if you want to go to be here to go through the tribulation, stay. I will be gone. What, what spirit is speaking in them? The spirit of fear. They are afraid. If you know God, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you will not worry. Whether you go through tribulation or not, you don't worry because you know the God whom you have believed in. Because you know this world have we no continuity. Then listen, let me tell you something. That the second coming of Christ to take us unto himself is not going to happen secretly. He said, all I shall see. All I shall see. If anybody tell you, sir, the rapture is going to be done secretly. People are, people are going to be whisked away secretly. Why should, God, why should God do things secretly? Why should he whisk you? Is he afraid of anybody? Is God afraid of anybody? God is not afraid of anybody. He's not going to whisk people away secretly. No, 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 no. If anybody tells you that that is, a, uh, that is what allows uh, deception to take place, 
because of because of that god says uh, if all eyes shall see so there will be no two way about that. There will be no Pastor Pimpo can not will not be the only person coming and say, "Well, yeah, I, I just saw the the saints are gone, secretly." So I become the no, no, no. It doesn't work that way. He said, "All I shall see him." God will send His angels to the four corners of the world to gather His own unto Himself. Nothing is going to be hidden from the sight of men. And say, "The whole world shall mourn because of Him." Revelation to the one verse seven. This is what they say. The sinners in Zion will be afraid. Fearfulness have surprised the hypocrites. Fearfulness will grip the heart of the hypocrites. Who amongst, then is asked the question, who amongst us, who amongst us, who amongst us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who amongst us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who amongst us? Who amongst us? And who amongst us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? Who amongst us? That's the question. In the time of tribulation, who amongst us shall abide? The same people that chapter verse 15 describes, they will abide in spite of what happens. Some of them, the Bible says the Antichrist will make war with them and kill them. But just because they are killed doesn't mean that they are going to go to hell. And just because they are killed doesn't mean that they've lost anything. Because this world is not our home. There is a place that the Lord has prepared for us. If you really believe what you've been preaching, then you know that this world is not our home. Let the earth be burned. Let the, mount, let the earth quick. Let the mountains move and all those things. The Lord our God is our God and there is a place that's prepared for us. So Jesus Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be. <laughs> sorrowful don't let your because i go to prepare a place for you beloved it is it is p proper during this difficult time these days of pestilence with coronavirus hovering over our earth that you and i make sure that we satisfy verse 15 that we should will be the people who walk righteously who speak uprightly that will be the ones among the people who despise gain that is gotten out of oppression that will be among those who do not who hate taking bribes that will be among those who stop our ears from blood from hearing bloodshed and will be those people who shut our eyes from seeing evil that is we despise evil we hate the spilling of human blood. We hate bloodshed. And we are the ones who cry and say, stop the war, stop the unnecessary violence, stop the unnecessary dropping of bombs upon people who have done you and I nothing. My beloved, this is what the Lord wants me to share with us today. It is a message not only for today, for the days to come Israel heard this message from Isaiah and the Bible tells us in the book of 1st Corinthians chapter 10 see the things that happened in the days of old even upon Israel are for our example the ones upon whom the last days have come and you and I are the ones may we heed the word of God May we take the necessary steps to turn away from all our wicked ways, to turn away from our love for money, our greed that causes us to oppress people, oppress individuals, oppress our neighbors so that we can get what we want and not what God gives to us. This is what the Lord wants us to do. There should be a total repentance, a breaking of our hearts, everyone, in every nation, in every land, this is the message God wants me to share with all of us. To surrender our lives to Him. Pastors, prophets, bishops, all those people who have learned the art of extorting money or depriving people of their material gains with lies, oppressing them with them lies so we can get from them what we count as 
a blessing from God which is not. You know, Paul says that there are those who think that uh, gain is godliness. No, no, that uh, the love of money actually is, 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 is no, gain is godliness. No, but it, it said gain is not godliness. Gain, using oppression to get gain is not godliness. Using oppression to get gain is not godliness. Read Second Timothy chapter 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. The greatest gain is godliness with contentment. That is the greatest gain. Not material things, not the love of money, which causes us to oppress people, causes us to take bribe, which causes us to spill blood. It's not great gain. That's God's word. Isaiah 33. And I will urge you to read Isaiah 34. Because there's a message we delivered there too. Read the whole of Isaiah 33. Because the first, the first few verses, the first uh, 12 verses uh, has powerful. It's uh, talking about the ambassadors and all those things of peace. Uh, fear will grip every one of them. Read all of them. That was what God gave to Israel then. And it gives the same message for us today. It holds true to us today also. Because our sins now are worse off than that of Israel at that time. It is my prayer that God will grant us brokenness. That we will be contrite, broken, break our hearts before God. And turn away from our wicked ways. Repent, surrender to God through Jesus Christ. Surrender wholly to Jesus Christ, to God through Jesus Christ. Those of us who lie, stop lying, stop deceiving, stop, stop misleading. You know, somebody had to just, <laughs> very, I don't know. Listen, let us, let God's word speak. And let us not allow ourselves to be deceived. For God cannot be mocked. Whatever we sow, we shall reap that. In these days, the Lord is calling for a people who separate themselves unto him and live righteously and uprightly and speak uprightly. Live righteously, speak uprightly. Live righteously, speak uprightly. Okay? God bless you. Grace and peace to you. I pray for your peace. I pray for your safety in this difficult time. May the Lord have mercy upon all of us and keep us under his sheltering wings in perfect safety. Grace and peace. Bye-bye.